Hi everybody, welcome to Norway. It's freezing, really cold. So I'm here in Oslo, I've got a few client meetings today, I've got a tutorial tomorrow and I've got a keynote the following day. Now when people see me present they often say, you're a natural, you're gifted, it's, it's incredible, there's so much energy. But that masks the insane amount of nerves and hard work that goes into it. You see I'm not naturally a gifted presenter at all. Um, I have to work extremely hard in order to, to overcome the nerves and I thought this sort of behind the scenes video might be kind of helpful and useful for those that also suffer with nerves. You see I sort of go through this cycle of I guess uh, wanting to push myself and see more of the world and entertain people and educate and teach. I mean that's what sort of drives me day to day and so I sign up for conferences and then I get that sort of speaker's remorse where I'm like, what have I done? Why am I doing this? You know? Then the nerves start and the preparation starts and the planning and the rehearsals and the tweaking the PowerPoints to make sure they're absolutely spot on. You know, I don't tend to do a talk unless I get probably six months to rehearse it. And then um, the nerves start coming up to the event. The nerves are absolutely insane just before it. Then I'm on stage and it's like an act, there's a sort of switch that goes off and it's all that planning and rehearsing and that practice ready for this particular event. And I love it, absolutely love it. I get so much energy. Then I have to decompress. Then I'm on that buzz of, yeah, I'm gonna do this again. So I sign up for another one and then the cycle starts again. I don't know whether you're the same. It's sort of, uh, you know, this cycle of sort of nerves and fear and exhilaration and amazing and just, wow, this is so cool. So, talk's about to start. Um, well, got about another half an hour. So this is my sort of pre-conference um, nerves, feeling pretty shaky, pretty nervous. But, you know, streamed as well. It's gonna be interesting talk so before a talk what I generally tend to do is just find a nice quiet space go for a wander up and down sort of maybe do some stretching meditation thinking some stuff god you can tell I'm nervous this is crazy fingers crossed it's gonna be a good talk This is pretty cool. I'm uh, decompressing after the conference in this awesome DeLorean that they've got in the, the foyer here at Rebel Rebel in Oslo. This thing is pretty cool. It's quite bright inside of here. So the decompression after a talk is uh, actually really quite important. And the reason being is because I apply the sort of 11 principles that I've covered in a video before to the talk itself. And it uses a lot of energy. Um, the talk went really well, by the way. I think the audience really enjoyed it. I think it was quite cool. And so what I do is I try to decompress afterwards, which is, you know, really my way to escape the crowds, the people, the conversations, just to sort of get my head reset, get my energy rebuilt because it's quite draining. Now, when we talk about the 11 principles, they apply to the talk that I've done, and I'm gonna just sort of very briefly rattle through them because I've already done a video on this before. But number one is the purpose, audience, and context. So I understood the purpose of the talk, which was to inspire, motivate, etc. because it was a keynote. The audience, I know the audience, it's this conference. Um, I know the audience, they're very technical, they're in the software development, software test world. 
And the context is, it's my first in-person conference for a long time, a couple of years. Principle number two is be enthusiastic. So the momentum in the talk comes from the speaker. You can't rely on the audience to give you that momentum and that energy. So it comes from the speaker. So you've got to be enthusiastic, you've got to be energetic. And that in itself um, can use a lot of energy, of course, because it's coming from you. So you've got to almost sort of like take yourself and add another couple of levels to it. Number three, communication is something the audience does. So a lot of what I'm talking is obviously I'm trying to remember the speech itself. I'm trying to do the talk, but at the same time, I'm also trying to read the audience, make sure that the jokes are landing, make sure that everything's going as you would expect it to do. Stories, lots of stories, uh, that's great. Uh, stories go where facts cannot, so it's getting quite busy in here actually. Don't waste the audience's time, so I only had half an hour, so that was actually a good talk. Practice is preparation, practice this talk a lot, it's a signature keynote, run it many, many times before. Uh, people remember how you make them feel, so you've got to try and make them feel good, hopefully, or inspired or motivated or whatever, because that comes from you. Nonverbal is a superpower, so you're always looking at your body language, trying to make sure that it's congruent with the message. It's getting super busy, it must be a break time here. People resonate with those that sound like them, so obviously I know the audience, so I'm using language and uh, technology and terminology that kind of makes sense to them. So as we've got your hacky body, of course I was hacking my body and now I'm hacking my body again to sort of decompress, bit of meditation, quiet time, sitting in this DeLorean, having a really good uh, little relax, although it's getting very busy and everyone's watching me because I'm sat in a DeLorean talking to a camera that's way over there. I probably look very silly indeed. And then listening is the greatest compliment. So listening to the questions, listening and responding to the audience, you know, are they laughing at the jokes? Are they doing the things that I'm expecting them to do? And so this decompression hasn't quite worked as planned because it's very busy. Literally everybody is watching me as I'm recording this video, so a bit self-conscious. But I did get time to chill out and relax. Get very, very nervous before the talk. Super nervous this morning. Um, you know, stomach didn't feel right, head didn't feel right. Just felt super anxious and nervous. First talk back in two years partly contributed to that in in-person talk. Um, but also it's just dealing with nerves. It's one of those things that comes with doing this. And I, I do this because I've got a message to share. I enjoy it actually afterwards. I get a lot of energy from it. But obviously that comes with the downside of the anxiety and the nerves. So with that, before everybody starts staring at me and people start coming over and standing in front of the camera, I'm gonna say goodbye from here, Oslo, this DeLorean. Now the embarrassing thing comes of trying to get out of this car. It's quite low. I've had to stick my leg out because there's lights and all sorts of stuff down here in it. It's not the easiest of cars to get in and out of. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs>